Hey guys, it's Magnum Assassin, and um, as the title says, I'm coming at you with a deck profile of my constructed build for Katsu. Uh, just like most, oh, well, I shouldn't say most people, but a lot of people start out with, you know, Ninja. I did, um, I, I like it. It, a lot of people say it's easy, but, you know, the game of Flesh and Blood is easy to a point. You need to just know how to combo properly. It's a real thinking game. So, one of the reasons I chose Katsu, though, for the most part, is because some of the other games I play, or used to play, I use Ninja a lot. So... It was the only right choice to do, and until, you know, hopefully in Monarch or Kingdoms when they bring out an Assassin class, that's when my channel's really going to make sense. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into it. Obviously, I have three Quicken Tokens right there. One foil from Crucible. I was lucky enough to get it when they were still dirt cheap. And then for equipment, or actually... So, we're going to start off with Katsu, for those who don't know. The adult hero version has 40 health or intellect and his ability the first time an attack action card I control hits each turn I may discard a card with cost zero if you do search your deck for a combo a card with combo banish it face up then shuffle your deck you may play it this turn so that's gonna make a little more sense later so I have some Null Rune Boots, uh, Arcane Barrier, you know, generic stuff. Um, just in case I go up against Rune Blade or Wizard, I have it. I have other Arcane Barrier stuff, I just don't know where it is at the moment. Hope Merchant Hood. So, as I like to say, we like to pop the hood. I use this as an instant, destroy it, and shuffle any number of cards from my hand into my deck, then draw that many. So like on my opponent's turn, if I don't have enough cards to guard with, or I have no defense reactions, just pop this, hope to get a defense reaction afterwards. Pretty good. Um, it's also ironic because if your opponent is not paying attention, and they see, oh, you're ninja. They won't realize that, you know, it's not the mask of momentum. And they more than likely will guard either the first or second attack. If you have an opponent opponent that, you know, realizes it, then oh well. <laughs> so the other equipment would be my legs is Breeze Rider Boots. When a ninja attack action card you control hits, you may destroy Breeze Rider Boots. If you do, attack action cards with combo gain go again this turn. It has battle worn and it defends for one. So let's say leg tap here hits, then any other card with combo that isn't in the leg, leg tap combo line will gain that go again. Better yet, even if you don't have Leg Tap and you have the other one, Rising Knee Thrust, you can attack, it hits, cool, break these. Now that combo card has go again, and every other combo card then does. The other ones that we have are the Snapdragon Scalers, which attack reaction, destroy these, and then target action card with cost one or less game go again. And that's very important because, you know, with Ninja, there's a lot of stuff that costs one or less. 
but if you try to use these with like Garian or Brute, they don't have many that are one or less. Then we have, you know, Harmonized Kadachi, which, there's my other one. Two Harmonized Kadachis right there. Once per turn, attack, it costs one, attack. If you have a card in your pitch zone with cost zero, Harmonized Kadachi gains go again, and it attacks for one. So you'd pitch a zero blue or a zero yellow, and do Kadachi Kadachi, and then do another attack. And then, for arms, we have Breaking Scales. Attack reaction, destroy Breaking Scales. Target action, attack action card gain, with combo gains plus one. It has Battle Worn, and it blocks for one. You know, find all spring tunic. It's in there for, you know, typical reasons. <laughs> At the start, you know, you gain one uh, energy counter, and then once you get three energy counters, you can instantly remove it. Use it, it as an instant to remove the three to gain a resource. So it kind of helps even on your opponent's turn. And it has blade break, and it for one. Then, big money card, Mask of Momentum. Like I said before with, you know, Hope Mer Merchant's Hood, you really don't need this particularly. It's good to have because of its effect, which is, you know, once per turn effect when an attack action card you control is the third or higher chain link in a row to hit, draw a card. So, so, it's good for the aspect of you get to draw that card, but it also guards for two and it's late break, so that's good too, but not many people are going to let your, you know, third or higher attack hit because of that. And for me, it's fun to have, it's good to have, but I use it to guard with a lot more than actually using it. So, without further ado, time to get into the deck. That's why you guys are here, right? So, I run... Three red light taps. It's, uh, you know, pitch for one, cost one, it has go again, guards for two, and attacks for four. Then I run three yellows, which once again cost one, but this time it pitches for two, shields two and attacks for three, and then you have the blue. Like tap, I have three of them. Cost one, attacks for two, defense for two. Then next we have three red rising knee thrusts. It's a cost zero, so it helps out with Katsu's ability if need be. So like if you have two of them, Oh, something hit. Cool. Throw this away so you can get uh, the other combo piece. Um, it's a zero cost. Pitches for one. Combo. If leg tap was the last attack, this combo combat chain rising knee thrust gains plus two and go again. So it's originally a three attack, three defense. But if you have leg tap before it. Rising E Thrust becomes a 5 with red. And then I run 3 yellows, which same same combo, you know, effect, but this time it gains plus... Oh, they're all, you know, it's the same exact one. Yeah. So, 
so it gains the same effect. So plus two and go again, but this time it's only two instead of three, so it's gonna be four. And then with this one, you have three blues. Once again, cost zero, three resource, because blue has the same exact effect, but this time it only attacks for one. So it's gonna come in for four again, or three, comes in for three. Now my next one is one of the, one of the two, uh, last combo line combo pieces that you can use for the leg series you have three blackout kick um it's a cost one obviously red is pitch one combo if rising knee thrust was the last attack this combat chain blackout kick Gains plus three. So it's originally attacking for four, has a shield of three, but if you have Rising Knee Thrust in there, it becomes a seven. Then I have one yellow, which it again costs one, same effect, but this time it comes in for three damage. So it's going to come in for six in total. Then I have two blues which is gonna come in for two damage, plus the three if you have that rising knee thrust. So it's five. So, and like I said, the blackout kick is the one alternative to the leg series. This one right here is, I feel, going to be a little better. It is more situational than that, you know, but I digress. Um, hurting technique. It costs one. It's a yellow pitch. Um, combo. If Rising Knee Thrust was the last attack this combo chain, Hurricane Technique gains plus one and go again. If Hurricane Technique hits, put it into your hand. So that is actually very good. Because let's say they guarded your uh, first attack or even your second attack. You played leg tap at that point. You've played now for your fourth attack, rising knee thrust. Fifth attack, boom, hurricane technique. Cool. They just let it hit. So instead of just coming in for, you know, the four, it's gonna come in for that five. It has go again, it hit. It's coming back to your hand. With the mask of momentum, you get to draw that card. So now you have two cards in hand and you can either pitch it for something that's gonna cost two or less, or you could just pitch the other card and be like, hey, guess what? I'm gonna attack you for another four. Either way, I feel like it's a good plan. So that's the end of the combo lines. The next attack action card that I have is a one of, and it's Snatch. It pitches for three, it's a cost of zero. It comes in for two and defends for two. If Snatch hits, you draw a card. So. If for some reason you can't do anything else, your opponent doesn't have any cards in hand, and you've already hit twice in a row, play this, attacks, hits, you draw a card from this, but you also get to draw a card from Mask of Momentum. And even better, like if you're not using Breeze Rider Boots and you're using Snapdragon Scales, you break Snapdragon Scales as an attack reaction, give it go again. Now you have two extra cards in your hand that you can either use for pitching or if they're both zero cost, you can attack with. So 
the next card I want to throw out there is Flock of the Feather Walker. It's a cost one, pitches for one. Its ability is, as an additional cost to play Flock of the Feather Walker, reveal a card in your hand with cost one or less, and then you create a Quicken token. So a Quicken token, for those who don't know, is when you play an attack action card or attack with a weapon, destroy Quicken token, and it gains go again. That card. So if I attacked with a weapon, that weapon would gain go again if it didn't have it. If I, let's say, I played this the previous turn, play it on top of the Quicken token, the next turn, get another one, you know, play this, boom, cool. Now, Flock of the Feather Walker has go again at this point because of Quicken. I show another card, I have another Quicken token, so I can play a second card that doesn't have go again by itself. It's a pretty fun little, you know, shenanigans. But it attacks for five and defends for two. So to get to the next one, I have three enlightened strikes. It's cost a zero. Pitches for one and it attacks for five, shields for three. But you have an ability that says, as an additional cost to play Enlightened Strike, put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. Choose one. So you choose one of the following. Draw the card. Enlightened Strike gains plus two, so it would be coming in for seven. Or you gain go again. Once again, because it is a cost of zero, technically you could either do the draw a card or give it plus two, and then break Snapdragon Scalers. That's an attack reaction to give it go again. And then play something else. The next card on our list in the deck. The next card in our deck is going to be three Salt the Wounds. It calls zero, pitches for two, it comes in for two, and then defends for three. Um, salt the Wound gains plus one for each attack that has hit this combat chain. So let's say you had a Flock of the Feather Walker hit, it had go again. Then Played Enlightened Strike, it hit. It gains go again. Your two Kadachis hit. Boom. Then you play this for the last one. That's going to be plus four on top of its two. So you're coming in for six at that point. So it's, it's good for those uh, finishing turns. I like to use it. Just to add pressure whenever, though. So, our next group would be three Scar for a Scar, red. It costs zero, comes in for four damage, and it guards for two. Its ability states when you play Scar for a Scar, if you have less life than your opponent, opposing hero, it gains go again. So, if they have, you know, 12 and you have 6, boom, you're going to gain go again. But the only thing is, if they have 12 and you have 12, you will not. Because it states you have to have less. So then I play one yellow and one blue. The yellow comes in for 3 and the blue comes in for 2. So next is my last action that I have in the deck, and it's a one of, and it is Plunder Run. It's a cost of zero, and the next time an attack action card I control hits this turn, draw the card. 
If Plunder Run is played from Arsenal, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three. So it's it's better to play it in the beginning of the chain. Um, so you're not breaking your chains, but if you have to, you can hold it in Arsenal, attack with Kadachi, attack with Kadachi, attack with Leg Tap. Um, leg Tap doesn't hit, cool. I'm going to play this from Arsenal. Now I'm going to play Rising Mithrust Red. Now, on top of the plus three that it's going to get because you played Lake Tap, you're going to have, you know, where'd it go? You're going to have the plus three from this as well. Or my bad. You're going to have plus two as well. So. Three, two, that's plus five. You're going to have eight damage coming at your opponent. Now, for my attack reactions, I want two. Ancestor and Empowerment. It costs zero. Target ninja attack action cards gain plus one, and I get to draw a card. So if you haven't caught on ninja, at least my ninja build, I like to do a lot of drawing if I can. The next attack reaction will be three red razor reflexes. So it costs one, pitches for one. Choose one, you get to either target a sword or dagger weapon and the attack gains plus three, or you target an attack action card with cost one or less, gains plus three, and if it hits, it gains go again. So that's very important to note that it states cost one or less because there's a card called Pumble that helps cards that are cost two or greater. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using it at the right time. <laughs> you don't accidentally put it on a card that is two or greater because it's just not going to work. Then my next card will be a defense reaction. Sink below. Cost zero. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. If you do, draw a card. It defends for four. Then I play two red unmovable. It costs three. It's a defense reaction. If unmovable is played from Arsenal, Gains plus one. The red one guards for seven. So if it's coming from Arsenal, you're guarding for eight. Then I play two red flick flack. It's a ninja defense reaction. It costs zero and guards for four. If the next card you defend with this turn is a card with combo, it gains plus two. So if you use Rising Mithras, Hurricane Technique, or Blackout Kick. It will gain a plus two shield on that. And then I run three blue flip flack. It guards for two, costs zero, and like the other one, it gives plus two to the shield for a combo card. And then going into the instant, I have one yellow reinforced line. It costs zero and target defense act, defending action card, attack action card, gains plus three. And like I said before, stuff specifically saying 
defense act, defending action cards or a cost of this much is very important because if not, if you don't pay attention to that and you try to do something like, oh, I play a defense reaction and then I try to use this on it. You just gave your opponent information in your hand. I play one blue, reinforce the line. This one gives plus two to an attack action card, it's defense. And now my last three cards in the deck, three red sigil of solace. It costs zero and it's one of the most basic cards. It gains you three life. It's one of the most basic cards, but it's one of the best cards to be in this deck because it helps you gain the life that you may have to take earlier on in that game. All right, well, that right there was my Katsu deck. Next video I'm going to do is probably going to be a Benchy Blitz deck that I have played on the channel against a couple videos back, if you go check it out, against House of Mysteria. He also has some videos on his channel of us playing against each other. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And let me know what decks you guys are building. Tell me what is your favorite deck that you're using right now. Without further ado, this is Magnum Assassin fading away.